While we're waiting for the frame rail to uh, to cool off here, I thought I'd take you for a quick tour of the actual frame jig. I, I realized as I'm thinking about it that I haven't actually walked you through uh, what might be going on. Okay, so we've got a Corvette C4 front cross member that I put in. The way I did it, um, reasonably straightforward almost clever <laughs> but I took the original front suspension and uh, I drilled some all well, the two bolt hole patterns actually the two cars have different bolt hole patterns the Volvo originally five on four and a half at the front the Corvette is uh, five on four and three quarters so that had to be accommodated so I I drilled up a just a quarter inch sprocket uh, it was cheap, it was cheerful, there it was right in front of me so I thought I might as well use it. Um, at any rate, attach those to some channel which are then going to attach to the girder. So I bolted all that mess up on the original suspension. So we've got the, uh, the Volvo suspension, you can imagine it being in here. And then the table was constructed on the bottom, you can see it here with my foot, right? And there's bolts and things on the bottom of that that allow it to adjust because my garage floor is, wow, just as bad as you can imagine. Um, anyways, then that was all attached in, welded down. The original uh, Volvo stuff was removed, as was a rather large, <laughs> gratuitous chunk of the frame. So chopped all that out. Then this uh, front cross member was put in. Now I didn't fabricate the bottom half of this cross member. I've done some work with it, but this came as a as a hot rod kit. Um, I don't regret buying it. I bought it because the uh, the Corvette C4 suspension geometry and the forged aluminum parts and all the rest of it are uh, rather better than anything else that's out there in the market at this time. There are a number of issues with this cross member and there are things about it that I really don't like. Uh, the first was, you know, the bottom of it wasn't flat or level. It's, it's made out of a piece of four inch tube. There's really no reason that it shouldn't be so other than when it was welded and then ground, it was hard to pick up a reference point for it. Now you can see I've got some some uh, one, two, three blocks here and some screw jacks that are attached to this cross member to get it up there and get it as level as I can. But the truth is that these these particular mounting surfaces were not perfectly true or level. Uh, so I fixed all that. Hey, everything takes a little bit of work. Then you can see here I've added the mounts for uh, the power steering. Now there's a bunch of stuff I'll say about that when I actually put that in, which we'll do up on the bench, as that makes life easier. We've had these the uprights uh, modified here to accept uh, what is a standard race car part actually. It's a 7 degree taper uh, tie rod end converter uh, with the bump steer collars. So that's going to be needed because well, who knows where this is relative to anything, right? You buy the cross member and there's no brackets for the steering. There's no, no much of anything on it. So a bit of a problem with that. Actually, there were brackets for the steering. I just had to cut them off because the steering rack was garbage. So I didn't want that. We're going with a race steering rack on this. A nice piece from Woodward. Uh, at any rate, as we move around and inside, the biggest issue I have with this uh, is you can see, I hope anyway, um, the suspension geometry of this is what attracted me to it. Um, it certainly wasn't the ease of fabrication. So at the front, now the Volvo suspension was very old school uh, in terms of its geometry so that the lower control arm was really really long right so it was it was in way in board of where this is and the upper control arm fit through a tiny little notch at the top and that was always you know it's very cute and compact and fit nicely but it essentially made it so that the wheel traveled almost straight up and down vertically and in 1950 that was thought to be a really good idea uh, now we know that the wheel should actually move on an arc and you should be uh, gaining camber or losing camber depending on where you are in the cycle of of wheel motion. So um, the Corvette C4 stuff actually is very good. The only thing we'll modify on this when we go other than to change the ball joints out to new parts 
is the lower ball joint is going to be a how racing part. Uh, it's half an inch longer, which effectively makes the upright a little taller, which if you're a nerd and you follow these things is essentially what happens in the C5 and C6 Corvettes. And if you've ever driven in one of those things in anger, uh, they handle very, very well. So hopefully, hopefully the old Volvo will be able to, well, I don't know if it'll be able to keep up, but might scare them. At any rate, one of the things that really bothers me about this is you can see that the relationship between these two arms is an interesting study. Uh, so not only do we have what's called anti-dive, uh, so the original Volvo, of course, is, is parallel. Uh, so anti-dive is uh, just a bit of geometry that you put in that uh, controls the, well, it does what it says it does. It controls the dive of the front of the car under braking uh, and under accelerating conditions, obviously just by essentially binding things. It's partially wrong, but let's not, let's not hurt each other over that. It's, it's close enough for government work. Um, <laughs> I get a lot more uh, camber adjustment too, right? We're bolting to the backside. We've got big bolts on the back that allow us to have all that adjustment. Um, so the bottom is straight, this is tipped, it's also back, right, and back gives you caster, and the Volvo, I think stock has like half a degree of caster, which is sort of what you want when you're manual steering a car. Uh, you're rotating straight on the pivot, well this has got an angle that goes through like this. Now that's actually advantageous again for handling, uh, if you've got caster in the system, this is 7 degrees, something like that then as you're turning, right, and you're, you're actually gaining uh, camber, which is what you want as you do that. Uh, we'll, we'll go to any of the engineering pages that explain suspension geometries and you can walk your way through that, but that's, it's a thing, it, you should have that, it's good. Uh, at any rate, it's what makes a modern car feel like a modern car. At any rate, you get grip, mechanical grip, that's what you want. You don't have to put fake grip on cars, mechanical grip works great. which goes from there, I put that out there, it's, it's about two inches long, which is good. This is good, so there's, there's some clever stuff going on here. The idea there is to uh, make sure, even though you see it done wrong a lot, uh, lower control arm on this particular setup in the original car is meant to be in double shear. Okay, so we have to be able to uh, provide that for it. It's got a nicely machined piece at the front, it's just unfortunate that these lines on the front are off ever so slightly. You know, they're weldments, right? They're, you do what you can. I understand. I weld. So um, I was just hoping for a bit better. So I'll have to put both the front and the back of that lower control arm in double shear. It does come with these monster thin washers. Uh, these things here, I'll take you underneath and show you. Uh, if you just bolted that on in single shear, uh, at the front, it's never going to be a problem. Probably never going to be a problem. Uh, at the rear, just remember what happens under hard braking, right? Under hard braking, the torque is taken primarily. It's a twisting motion, right, at that point. So it's pulling at the back of it. Uh, you probably, you probably warp or bend or hurt something. At any rate, let's get that. We'll get that in double shear. The frame member is right there. Uh, relatively simple to do, so it shouldn't be a big deal to get that in there. At any rate, for all the uh, whining and complaining I do about it. It's still one of the best and cheapest options out there. I believe the whole crossmember kit is at four or five hundred dollars. It wasn't that expensive. Um, and the Corvette parts I bought on eBay actually got those uh, eBayed. Um, whatever you do, if you're going to do a conversion like this, do get the Uber Fat washers. These. This is the way that upper control arm arm is supposed to sit. Okay. So there's a great big fat washer. This one here. Here. And there's a thin one at the back, and there aren't, I mean, I bought this, and the guy said it was complete, and of course, he didn't give me the washers. Uh, good luck finding those washers, the big ones. I guess you could probably get them at a GM dealership, maybe. Um, total pain in the backside when guys sell you stuff and it's not right. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, these will be all cleaned up and everything's fine. So that's how I did the jig. Um... Is it the best way to do it? I don't know. Because one of the things it did do is it replicated the fact that my original car had a very slight 
wheel base imbalance. It was an eighth of an inch longer uh, on the driver's side than it was on the passenger side. We didn't know that at the time. Any measurements that I was doing uh, alone in the garage were, were I guess, a little unhelpful because I thought everything was fine. But anyways, when you get a little wheel base difference, in other words, that uh, girder across the middle is not perfectly square to the car. And everything's welded in a little not perfectly square to the car. So I'm just going to fix that. <laughs> I'm going to fix it by starting uh, without... The, the original idea was actually to try to tack weld this thing up in the car. Uh, I think I would have just become uh, very frustrated with that. Um, so we're going to do it all up on the bench and make sure it all fits in nicely. I've got the table, so I might as well use the jig for what it was intended for. Uh, things like engines and other things when they go in, those can go in in the car. It's really not that bad to do that job. Um, but it may come in and out of the car several times uh, before we're finished.